Hi, and welcome to today's lesson, circumference. We're going to take a look at circumference in two different ways. First, we're going to look at it in terms of diameter. So here we have one diameter. What I'm going to do is place the diameter around the circle. Around the circle is the circumference. So I'm measuring it using diameter. I'm going to lay my first diameter and I see there's room for another. And remember the diameter goes uh, through the widest part of the circle through the center. So I'm going to go ahead and place this diameter around the circle. And it looks like there's space for a third one. So let's go ahead and place our third one around the circle. And I have fit three diameters with space for a little bit more right here. So that means that I can define my circumference so far as slightly more than three diameter lengths around the circle. If I was to use a formula, I would write it as circumference equals diameter times three point something. And I'm not sure what that point something is at this second. So what I'm going to do is break my circle into sectors. This is where I've taken each diameter and just extended it towards the center of the circle. And I notice that I've got this shape right here. If I were to split these remaining sectors into pieces that were all about this size, I would be able to more accurately decide how much of a section this is. So when I split them all up, I notice that there's seven pieces in each full sector here. So each diameter made seven sevenths, and then this has one seventh. When I add those together, I might find something that looks familiar, 22 sevenths. That is our approximation for pi. So if I was to divide 22 by seven, I get approximately 3.142. And then if I was to round that to the hundreds place, I get 3.14. So coming back to our formula here, I could replace this blank here with 0.14. That means that my circumference formula means that circumference is equal to pi times diameter. Let's take a look at this using just our knowledge of pi. So we know that pi is representing around the circle to a ratio going across the circle or circumference divided by diameter. So if we're looking at it in terms of ratio, that circumference to diameter equals pi. Here I have a circle and in the circle I have diameter. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and take this formula. Instead of writing out the word circumference and diameter, I'm just gonna use C and D to represent circumference and diameter. And I can manipulate this formula by isolating C, circumference, to get it alone to find out the formula for circumference. What does circumference equal? And I can do that the same way as solving a one-step equation by multiplying uh, both sides by diameter. Then the diameters cross out, and I'm left with circumference equals pi times diameter again. But what if my circle uses radius? There's two ways of thinking about that. Basically, we could just go ahead and um, understand the relationship between radius and diameter is that it takes two radii to create the same distance as a diameter. So instead of using the D, I could just substitute that for two times R. And the other way would be to uh, solve this using pi times diameter and multiply by two at the end. The reason that this way is preferred is because it makes sense I am substituting in two times r for diameter, which is gonna give me two times pi times r equals circumference. And these are the two formulas we'll be using to solve circumference problems today. So let's get started. In this first problem, I see that I'm gonna be using 3.14 for pi. I also see I have a radius and the radius is seven inches. So using those formulas, I am going to use the second one that has radius in it already. And my first step for circumference problems is to write the formula. So circumference equals two times pi times r. My second step is to substitute the numbers into the formula. So circumference equals two times, we said 3.14 is what we're using for pi. And then my radius was seven. And then my third step is to multiply everything together. And I am gonna be using the approximation symbol because I'm rounding here for pi. This is not exactly pi, it's an approximation. And I'm gonna be making sure that I'm putting my units at the end. Now, I'm just describing around the circle, which is one dimension. So I'm gonna leave it as just inches. I don't have to add anything to inches. What if they don't give you the units? 
So here I have a circle that's on a piece of uh, grid paper and I know that I'm gonna be using 3.14 for pi. So let me go ahead and pull up my formulas. So which formula should I use here? Well, I can tell that diameter is going through the widest part of the circle. So I'm gonna be looking up, down, and across to find diameter. So if I look up and down, I'm gonna go ahead and count. What is the distance between the top to the bottom of the circle? One, two, three, four. All right, let's make sure that it's the same on the other side, because if it's a circle, it should have the same distance going up and down as it does side to side. And going across the circle, I have a distance of one, two, three, four. So the diameter here is four units. So now I know that I'm gonna be using circumference equals pi times diameter. My first step is to write the formula out again. So circumference equals pi times diameter. Then I'm gonna substitute in the values I know, which I'm using 3.14 for pi, and then my diameter is four here, four units, and then multiply. And because it didn't tell me how many uh, units to use, I'm just gonna use the word units. It didn't tell me if I was using inches or feet. I'm gonna use the word units. And remember, um, the approximation symbol is because we have approximated pi. So let's recap. Steps for circumference. First, you're gonna decide which formula you're using and write it out. Second, substitute the values you know. And third, solve by multiplying. That wraps up our lesson. Thanks so much for tuning in. Feel free to click to subscribe for this and other lessons. Until next time.